Hey, one more example. This one's kind of silly, but that's okay. So, new event proposed for the Winter Olympics. Athletes going to sprint 100 meters, starting from rest, leap onto a bobsled. Person in bobsled will slide down a ramp and into a spring. And whoever compresses the spring the farthest wins the gold medal. All right, so our contestants, our athlete, Lisa, has a mass of 40 kilograms. We know the length of this ramp is 50 meters long. The angle's 20 degrees, that's already in the picture. They're sprinting 100 meters. The bobsled, I'm going to just call it sled, is 20 kilograms. Lisa can reach a maximum speed of 12 meters per second in the 100 meter dash. So I'm going to assume she has reached right before she jumps on the sled. The ramp has a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.05. Consider the horizontal surfaces as frictionless. How far will Lisa compress the spring? Now, the reason they're having us pretend the horizontal surfaces are frictionless is just to simplify the problem a little bit. So we're going to say that friction is only acting on the slope itself. We know as soon as she jumps on the sled, at this up here, they have kinetic energy, they being her on the sled. So together, Lisa on the sled has kinetic energy at the top of the hill and gravitational potential energy at the top of the hill because they are at a height above the lowest point, which oftentimes we call the lowest point y equals zero, just for simplicity's sake. We know there is thermal energy generated or created as they slide down this slope. When they get down here, they have all kinetic energy and some thermal energy has been created. Then they're going to run into the spring and compress the spring. So at this moment in time, if we assume the moment they have compressed the spring a maximum amount, because that's what we're trying to find, how far will Lisa compress the spring? Ultimately, we want to know this as final. So let's make this our final moment in time. Now, yes, Lisa is colliding with the spring, but we can always account for springs in terms of energy. So at this final moment in time, there is going to be elastic or spring potential energy because the spring is compressed. There will not be kinetic energy. There will not be gravitational potential energy because we're calling this lowest point y equals zero. Our initial moment in time, we need to think that through a little bit. Our initial moment in time needs to be right after she has jumped on the sled. Jumping on the sled is a collision and it is a totally inelastic collision which means we have to use momentum conservation of momentum we cannot use conservation of energy when we're dealing with a an el inelastic collision so in terms of talking about energy initially and finally, 
this initial point needs to be Lisa on the sled and then traveling to that final location. So to figure out the kinetic energy of Lisa on the sled, we need to calculate momentum. We can say that the mass of Lisa times her initial speed right before jumping on the sled, the sled's not moving, so she's the only one that has momentum prior to the collision, but then she is on the sled, they are moving together. This V final is their speed together at the top of the hill, which is what we need in terms of talking about the initial kinetic energy of them together. So let's go ahead and throw that, those numbers in. We know Lisa has a mass of 40 kilograms. We're assuming she's reaching her maximum speed of 12 meters per second. 40 plus 20, because her mass plus the sled's mass. Let's see, 40 plus 12 to 60. So together, Lisa on the sled are traveling eight meters per second. So the speed at the top of the hill. Now that the collision has occurred and we have accounted for that, we can use conservation of energy to look at the combination of Lisa on her sled moving between the location initially at the top of the hill and finally compressing the spring. You could break it into parts if you want, but there's no need to. So we've said at the top of the hill, because they're moving, there is kinetic energy initially. They are at some initial height above the ground, so there is potential energy initially. There's no forces outside of gravity, spring, friction that are doing work, so we don't have that work external term. Final potential energy, so initial I'll label that as G, because final we have potential energy, but it's now because of the spring. There's no kinetic energy finally, but there is thermal energy generated because of friction. So one half mv initial squared, where m is specifically their combined mass of 60 kilograms, plus mg y initial, it has to equal one half ks final squared. K is the spring constant. They told us that was 2,000 newtons per meter. We're looking for s final. And then thermal energy, we can calculate by the force of kinetic friction times the distance they slide down that slope. All right, so D, I labeled it L initially. I'll call it D to be consistent with our equation. Y initial is D sine 20, right? Just the dimensions of this triangle. If the slope is 50 meters long, then we can find that vertical height from D sine 20. We know the masses, we know V initial, we now have the information necessary to find Y initial. Friction. The force of kinetic friction is going to be the coefficient of friction times the normal force. The normal force is mg cosine of our angle. B 
because of the component of gravity, just this component right here. So mg cosine 20 is where that comes from. So our equation becomes 1 half m v initial squared, which we have the speed, we have the mass, plus mg, I'm going to go ahead and put in d sine 20, because we know y initial is d sine 20, has to equal 1 half ks final squared, plus this force of friction, I'm going to go ahead and put the 20, times that distance d, the 50 meters, they slide down the slope. Big equation, but much easier to get to than try to break it into parts using forces. So let's go ahead and put the numbers in. Their combined mass is 60. We found they were traveling at 8 meters per second at the top of the hill. The length of the incline is 50 meters. I believe we said K, 2,000 newtons per meter. S final is what we're looking for. The coefficient of friction was 0.5. We need the total mass all the way through. So we have everything except for S final. So we can calculate that. All right, so I'm getting as final is 3.25. Let me double check. Really, we only have one sig fig because of the coefficient of friction. So approximately three meters. That is a really long distance. So I'm not sure. <laughs> how they're supporting this spring, but I also would imagine it would hurt to run into it. So this is silly all the way around, but a good example of needing to use momentum for the collision with her and the sled, and then energy can be used after that collision. Again, we don't need to use momentum with the spring because we can account for what the spring does in terms of the elastic potential energy.